All right, thank you, Chris, for the uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Mac Gonzalez, and I'm an originator with Foremost Financial. Um, just to give a quick overview of my, uh, my, my short talk here. Uh, first, I'll explain who Foremost is and what we've, what we've done and the impact we had on the industry. Um, then I'll talk about our missing middle projects that we financed. We were financing missing middle projects before it was called missing middle. Um, then we'll kind of walk around a, um, if you are to a, a, a approach a, a lender with a financing request, what the best way to do that and how to get the best terms possible from that lender. And I'll talk about important questions to ask any, um, any prospective lender. And then um, also I'll, I'll talk about important financing related um, topics that everyone taking on a project sh should learn and um, take into consideration. So uh, we've been around for 36 years. Um, I think it's a bit of a, a big void in the financing landscape. Um, the big Canadian banks are, are well regulated, but there's so, many, so much hoops and bureaucracy to, to jump through that they do not finance small infill construction projects. Um, we've, I've never really lost a client or a, a construction loan to a bank because they don't really do it on, on a small scale. Too many hoops to jump through, too, it's too expensive from the cost consulting standpoint. So foremost, uh, we have a, a niche in the market. So we focus small infill construction. We're kind of focused in the greater Toronto area. We have about 170 loans on the books, um, about $300 million of assets under management. And um, we avoid, so we're not a bank. We, we source our funds from in, in a pool of individual investors. So a lot of retired doctors and um, other people kind of rely on us for income. So we take a pool of uh, money from primarily retirees and then when we, we lend out to builders on a short-term basis, they build their projects, make the money, and then our clients get paid back and earn a, a nice retirement income primarily. Um, so our secret sauce is, um, it's very fast and easy. So banks kind of take a long time. Uh, there's a lot of um, bureaucracy and approvals and uncertainty. Uh, but at Foremost, we're a small operation, so we provide fast and dependable uh, financing services where you know if we say we'll do something, we do it, and pretty fast turnaround times, we could turn around a commitment letter in a week or two and provide you with the money that you need fairly easily. Um, our secret sauce is we have our, our own in-house cost consultant, so um, some other com companies use appraisers and very expensive high-end uh, consultants that do 100 plus page reports. Um, we don't do that. We make it much faster and easier. Um, so we've, we've kind of financed the, the pioneers of missing middle construction in Toronto. Um, and right now, if you're looking at a, a building a duplex, triplex, fourplex, or, or beyond, um, you really don't have the obstacles that our, our previous clients have encountered. So uh, as has been said, um, there's more certainty in the planning environment now. Um, and before, I guess the, the process was kind of hard. So you wouldn't have certainty on what you get approval for. I guess if your neighbors kind of rise up and start a, a war against you, you're at the T-Lab or the OMB previously. Um, so taking on these projects was very expensive, very risky. There was development charges previously for certain units. And um, 10 years ago, it was actually hard to get these projects appraised because there was no um, one or two unit condos. There was no... Um, not many duplexes, uh, triplexes uh, that are new and high-end trading in the market. So we kind of have already financed the pioneers in this and it, it'll just get easier. The more, the more of these types of housing that are built, sold, rented, the easier it will get for everyone. Kind of, it's kind of floating the boat. So I think we've, we're at a new moment now where it's gonna be much easier to, to do these projects. Um, so this is a project that we financed about 10 years ago. Uh, it was a, a row house that someone bought um, I think it was taken to the OMB, but eventually they, they um, converted it into a, a, two, like a duplex and it was condominiumized and it was um, subsequently sold a few times. So uh, this property and many like it are, are, are a good comparable for um, projects that are done now based on these resales. The, the prices keep on going up every single time it trades, and it's a good comparable sale that appraisers use for a lot of our, our new projects. We've done dozens and dozens of these across the uh, downtown area. Um, so this project is something we've done at uh, Ossington and Bloor. Um, it's a fourplex with a, a laneway suite in the back. Um, so our client used to um, cut quite heavily buy these projects, renovate or, or build them into duplexes, triplexes, and he would um, turn them into condos and eventually sell the units. Uh, but for this one it was a little bit different that he actually um, rented all, he, he did, he did um, 
register a condo on the building, but he, he had actually just rented all, 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 five, all five units and they got takeout financing at a bank and ret retains this as an income property. Uh, just gives them greater flexibility down the line. Um, yeah, so certain of our projects have been condo, certain have been um, condo rented, um, and others, as, as Chris mentioned earlier, um, this is two fourplexes that we were happy to finance for him um, in the past. So we, we financed the, the um, acquisition of the, the second uh, semi-detached home. They knocked both down and built two fourplexes. So it's a very common uh, project for us that we do all day long. And we're happy to deal with high quality builder developers uh, to finance these types of buildings and projects. Um, this is actually a fairly interesting project right here. Uh, it's a threeplex, um, but it's not, typically these projects have been in more of the downtown core, kind of Trinity Bellwoods type area, but this is actually in Etobicoke at Islington in the 401. Uh, a builder from Ottawa came and he was doing triplexes, duplexes from Ottawa, moved to Toronto, and um, he did this more of a reasonable rate. So he didn't, he didn't register as a condo, he rented, so he built this um, three unit uh, duplex, um, the finishings are kind of a little more modest, like it is Etobicoke, um, it's not in the most uh, high-end area of Etobicoke, like it's across from a Walmart, not, nothing, there's nothing wrong with Walmart, but it's more, a little more accessible to individuals, so he rented out all three units, and then he listed it for sale, it was sold to an investor, and uh, he has a great program where he buys these in kind of the suburbs, so uh, what started downtown, is kind of more moving um, into the suburbs to provide great rental accommodation. Um, it kind of resembles a condo from the inside. They're all two bedroom uh, apartments with, I would say condo type finishings, but this works. Like the other ones downtown are quite high end and resemble single family homes. This kind of more resolves in a condo. So everyone has their own kind of strategy and it kind of makes it work. And us as a lender, it's, it's for us to understand the strategy, kind of compare it to what other people have done in the past and kind of provide the financing needed to, to make it happen. And, um, oh, this is currently a fourplex uh, in the east end of uh, downtown. And there's actually a laneway garden suite. So this project's currently ongoing. It'll be tenanted soon. And then either sold or, or sold or uh, refinanced with an institution uh, at the end of the day. Um, and this is actually, so I know it's been very focused right now on the city of Toronto. Um, but this type of missing middle housing is actually spreading to other areas of um, the other areas of the province. Uh, this is Bowmanville. Uh, we had clients that uh, purchased a, a duplex that was about 100 years old. Um, or so two duplexes side by side. And then they, they, they did an extensive renovation on each duplex and they built two garden homes at the rear of the property. And uh, eventually they'll build probably another duplex in the backyard as well. Um, so we were able to finance the purchase of the property. Uh, we're financing the renovation um, with 100% of the hard construction costs. Um, to happen. So we've got involved with these projects. Some of them have been uh, purchased already with existing financing and then we often take out that financing and then provide uh, a loan facility uh, for the construction or we actually finance the purchase of the property um, and the advantage is there's no debt service coverage. It's much easier. Like banks are typically um, really care about cash flow and um, it's hard to get qualified. It's hard to qualify for enough uh, money on purchase for these properties. Um, but with us, we, we understand at the end of the day, you're either going to sell the property or refinance it once tenanted with institutions. So it much, it's much easier for us to understand these projects and finance them as well. Um, so it's important when you, when you approach a lender with a financing request, uh, there's three main uh, topics to speak with that lender about. So first, um, it's really important that you do a great job of explaining the project, explaining how, like what, how this project would be different from others, how, um, all the specifics in terms of square footages and your strategy once complete, if you're going to sell it or if you're going to refinance it, um, your pro forma is very important. So on the revenue side, how much, what do you expect to sell for or be able to get takeout financing for it at the end of the day and all your costs. Um, and then exactly just request how much money you're going to have and just make sure you have enough money uh, on the side for equity to uh, accomplish what you need to accomplish, making sure that if there's a cost overrun or a delay, you have the financial wherewithal to kind of overcome that. Um, next section, your experience. So it's important to tell your lender, listen, I have a great team um, that support me. I have the experience to do what I need to do here and I have the team that supports me. So if you have a great interior designer, say you have a great interior designer, or if you have uh, work as an interior designer or your work or your, um, your general contractor with many projects um, in, in the past, uh, it's important kind of 
show your strength to the lender, say, listen, I have great experience. Don't worry, you're not going to lose money on this. There, there won't be any hiccups. You'll be very low maintenance. You have what it needs to be done. So it's really important to sell your experience as well um, after describing your project. And then at the end of the day, um, disclose to your lender, okay, listen, I have the financial uh, wherewithal to um, overcome these cost overruns. You have the money to um, make the project happen. And if there are unforeseen things, um, if you just explain, like, listen, if there is a bump in the road, I have X, Y, and Z funds that I could bring in to kind of make this project a success at the end of the day. Um, so there's kind of four kind of key aspects that you need to be aware of if you are taking on a project like this. Um, in Ontario, every lender has to, um, there's a, it's the Ontario Construction Lien Act. And so you have to, um, either the lender or yourself, you have to withhold 10% of your hard cost budget um, in case there's a lien on the property, it has to be available to be paid out at the end of the day if the lien uh, claimant is successful. Um, so um, the mortgage lender will have to withhold 10% of your budget for hard construction costs. Um, at foremost, we do not charge interest on that holdback until it's actually advanced. Um, so one thing to consider when, when looking at that um, and just budget accordingly. So you will actually, if you have half a million to work in place, there will be a $50,000 lien holdback um, and they're pretty small for these projects. If it's a 50 story condo tower, it's easy for these, these, um, the lien release to be, um, uh, I guess released in stages, but these projects, it's too small. It's too onerous to, to have everything signed off to, to have these releases partial, like have partial releases during the project. So typically, um, the 10% of your budget will be released, uh, 61 days after the property is, uh, substantially complete, which is 97%. Um, builder's risk insurance is also very important. So if there's a fire, if your spray foam insulation spontaneously combusts or your electrician starts a fire, your roofer using a torch burns down your house or plumbers using a torch, um, adequate, you need adequate insurance just to protect yourself and the lender will insist on it as well. So it's important to work with a good commercial um, insurance broker and having adequate insurance. And then um, it's important to match your costs with source of funds. So. 99% um, of um, builders have financial issues um, from minor to severe because um, the cost associated with a project is not lined up with their funding sources. So the lender will give you X amount as per their loan and then you have your funding sources if it's um, investor funds coming in or your own money and if, there's, if, there's, uh, if your costs um, are in excess of your source of funds, then naturally it's stressful for everyone. You're opening yourself up to financial risk and that's the number one thing you need, really need to look out for um, with cash flowing through your project. And you'd be surprised with how often it's overlooked and people don't really um, account for that as much as they should. And then uh, HST, so um, when you sell a new home in Canada, it's, uh, you're eligible, you, you have to pay HST on the sale price and there's no real way around it. So there's a $24,000 tax credit when you do sell um, and then you have to pay 13% HST on the whole sale price. So that really impacts the economics of a lot of projects. Um, there's certain projects with renovations that other people get into. Some people pay HST, some people don't. We don't really get involved. We're not tax experts, we're not accountants, um, but I think an HST is a very, uh, it's an overlooked factor, but it's a very important factor when looking at uh, um, project economics. Um, and so it's important you, okay, when you're evaluating who you want to borrow money from to complete your project, it's important that you sit down with them and ask them very key important questions. So not all lenders, not all brokers are considered equal. So when you're dealing with a lender, you ask them, okay, how do you source your funds? Um, are you relying on another organization to, um, to, to uh, give you money. So if you think someone's a lender, but really they're gonna have to go to another organization to get financing, they're not really in control. They're more of a mortgage broker. There's nothing wrong with being a mortgage broker. They're very valuable to find, for finding uh, appropriate financing for packaging loans. Um, but you, as, when you're searching for somebody, uh, you gotta make sure if, um, if they're relying on another organization. So some people do A, B lending in the space. So, um, a bank like Equitable would take the senior portion of the debt and they would take the junior portion of the debt. And um, so the person you're speaking to is not in full control. Um, at Foremost, we don't rely on any other organization. We have our mutual fund trust, which is our pooled fund. So um, we're in charge of the decision making. That's why we're able to do things fast and easy. Um, and talk about approval time, because 
a lot of people don't have the luxury of waiting four or six months to get their financing approvals in place. People need certainty. You're lining up your trades. You're paying for deposits. You want to know you're able to get off the ground when you need to. So we've got to talk about timing and certainty. Um, it's also very important. And understanding these costs. So what the lender fee is, what any admin fees are, um, any potential renewal fees when the, the loan does come up for renewal, and then require documentation. Some, um, some financial institutions require audited financial statements and corporate opinions. Um, we're a little more lenient on some of those aspects um, of the underwriting stage. It's not like a mountain of paperwork. Like a lot of the regulators require gobs of paperwork, a lot of back and forth. So you gotta make sure, understand how easy it is to get approvals or not and, and what's involved. And then, um, so yeah, documentation and um, wherewithal financial statements and some reports too. So some, if, if, if it's a residential property and it's always been residential and there's no dry cleaners or gas stations around, we don't require uh, phase one or two environmental site assessments. Uh, some lenders require uh, phase one environmental site assessments. That's making sure that there's, there's no potentially contaminating activities in the house or around it. And often, if there, at one point there's a hot, if there's a, a heating oil tank in the basement, that would trigger a phase two, which they would have to kind of investigate around and it gets, it gets very expensive and risky uh, and very time consuming. So we're a little more reasonable on that. You just gotta understand before you, you work with somebody and give them a big deposit, um, what would be required. Um, also, a cost consultant is a big one. So it's not like you're building a 50 story um, tower, which is very expensive, very costly. Um, so you have to understand, okay, who will be monitoring the project? So some, some lenders use appraisers um, who kind of check boxes and appraisers are good at valuing properties, but they don't really monitor construction very well. Uh, it could be an arduous process. So understand if it's an appraiser, um, there's some, some cost consultants do a very good job on very large, complicated projects. A 50 story tower, it's great to use a, a CB Ross, a, a Finnegan Marshall. Um, they kind of really do a great job of uh, checking invoices and um, checking your costs, doing these big 50, 100 page reports. Um, at Foremost, we have our own internal cost consultants. So uh, at the beginning of the project, you'd give us your budget, we'd review it, we'd agree on it. And when the work is in place, uh, within a day or two, our, our lawyer will transfer you the funds and you're on to the next project. So you gotta make sure, understand the cost of these cost consultants and understand the process involved and documentation. We don't need to see reports or invoices or confirmation of payment. Uh, we kind of trust you as the property owner to, to get what you need it done, but we do require it to be a work in place. Um, yeah, and understand the timing involved and then um, understanding how much money you need to contribute to the project. Um, and thank you all for your time.